Okay, welcome. Here's your HMH lesson for today. Today we're going to be reading Abuelo and the Three Bears. Abuelo and the Three Bears is a folk tale. Folk tales are old tales or stories passed down over time through storytelling. So when you read Abuelo and the Three Bears, we're going to look for animal characters that act and talk like people. The author's purpose, is it to entertain or explain? Why, what is the author's purpose of writing this? And then we're going to be looking at the story sequence, the beginning, middle, and end of the story, and how pictures and words help you understand what happens. It's important you understand what happens at the beginning, middle, and end of the story because later when we are done reading, you are going to take out your reading graphic organizer. It looks like this. And you are going to have to retell the story, what happens at the beginning, middle, and end. You are not doing this right now as I am reading. You will go back and do this after we read the story. Okay, um, let's look at the anchor chart for retell. Again, retelling is the beginning, middle, and end. You're retelling the story. When you retell, you describe what happens in a story in order by using the words first, next, then, and last. And then use your own words, use details, use words and pictures. All right, so let's keep going. We're going to set a purpose. As we read, we're going to, or after we read, we're going to retell the story using our own words at what happened beginning, middle, end of the story. The key word is your own words. You are not going to copy down the book word for word. Make sure you're paying attention. Power words. We went over most of these yesterday, but I'm going to quickly review some of them. Arrive when somebody gets to a certain place. So in the picture, the grandchildren arrived at dinner to their grandparents' house. Grumpy is like to be in a bad mood. Joking is when you are saying something but you don't mean it or uh, you're saying it to be funny. Tucked, uh, when you put something under something else. So this boy is tucking in his shirt under his pants. Stubborn, brother and sister. Brothers is stubborn because he won't give the remote to his sister. Stubborn means like um, hard-headed or don't want to change. You, it's hard to change. Growled. Here the dogs growled at each other. That's like to make the low, deep sound. Arr, they growled. Shrugged. This girl shrugged like she doesn't know. So when you shrug, that means what? That means you lifted and lowered your shoulders to show that you don't know. So everyone shrug for me. Exactly. You're showing me that you don't know. You're not telling me. You're just showing me. Sometimes we make the noises, mm, and that's, I don't know. All right, shrugs. And then the last one is offered. Here, the girl offered her teacher a apple. So something, if someone offers you something, they're giving you something. So if you offered something to someone, you, uh, you asked to give it to him or her. Can you have this? You're offering it to them. All right, and then we're going to stop there. We're going to go over culture next time. Let's keep going. We're going to build background. Ooh, we're going to listen to the audio to find out more about bears. What do bears eat? They eat plants and animals that live in their habitat. Brown bears live mostly in grasslands and mountains. They eat berries, roots, fish, small mammals, and insects. Black bears usually live in forests, mountains, or swamps. They eat mostly grasses, herbs, fruits, berries, and nuts. Polar bears live in the icy cold Arctic. They eat mostly Arctic mammals. In the summer, they eat berries and plants. Some of the bears you find in stories like to eat porridge. All right, so in this story, the bears like to eat porridge. In this story, they make the bears a lot like what? Humans. Humans. They make them look alive. All right, uh, let's see. In this story, there's going to be some words that are in Spanish. They may not be familiar to us, but we can use the glossary in the back of the story to determine the meaning of the unfamiliar words. Glossary is the part of the story or the part of the book that tells us what the word means. It's like a small dictionary. What do you guys think the story is going to be very similar to? Leia? 
Very good. Goldilocks and the three bears. What do you think abuelo means? Um, go ahead, Rena. Grandpa, grandfather. Very good. So grandfather and the three bears. Let's read. Abuelo and the Three Bears by Jerry Tello. Illustrated by Ana Lopez Escriva. It was a quiet Sunday. Emilio and his grandfather sat on the front porch. Abuelo, said Emilio. Do we have to wait much longer? When will everybody get here? Your cousins will arrive soon, Abuelo answered, and we'll have a fine dinner. I'll tell you a story to help pass the time. What? Uh, what is the problem Emilio has here? Leia? Good, he's tired of waiting for his cousins to arrive. He wants them to get here. And how does his grandfather or his abuelo help solve the problem? He tells him a story. Good, he tells him a story. He tells him a story to pass time. Um, and how do the pictures help us understand what's happening? What is the boy doing? He's sitting down and listening. Isn't he listening to his grandpa? Yeah. Yes. So there were three bears who lived in the woods. Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and the little Osito. One Sunday morning, Papa Bear woke up as grumpy as ever. Then he smelled something good. Mmm, frijoles, he said. Abuelo, you're joking, laughed Emilio. Bears don't like beans. Well, all the bears I know like frijoles, said Abuelo. What are frijoles? Beans. Beans, very good. I'm going to stop for a moment and describe what has happened at the beginning of the story. I'm going to use my own words and details from the pictures. So first, Emilio is waiting for his cousins to arrive. I would definitely be listening right now because I'm giving you the answers to what you're going to write in your graphic organizer when we're done. So the first thing that happens is Emilio is waiting for his cousins to arrive. Abuela says he will tell Emilio a story while they wait. Then Abuelo begins to tell a story about three bears. Papa, Mama, and Osito. As I read, I will retell the events in the middle and end of the story to make sure I understand what is happen what happens to Emilio and Abuelo and to the bears in Abuelo's story. What do you think the middle part of the story will be about? Do you think it's going to be about Emilio or do you think it's going to be about grandfa grandfather's story? Grandfather. Grandfather's story. Let's read to find out. Papa Bear got up and rushed down to the kitchen. Buenos dias, said Papa Bear to Mama Bear and Osito. Papa Bear sat down at the table and tucked a napkin under his chin. How are the frijoles? Are they ready yet? he asked. Yes, answered Mama Bear, but they're still too hot to eat. I can't wait, said Papa Bear. I'm so hungry. I can eat an elephant. Abuelo, said Emilio, bears don't eat elephants. Emilio, answered Abuelo, you must never argue with a hungry bear. Very good. That's a metaphor. He's not really going to eat it, but he's describing how hungry he is. What does buenos dias mean? Everyone? Good morning. Very good. So what do we know? When we wake up in the morning, how do we normally feel? Hungry. Not Maybe not everybody, but most people feel hungry when they wake up. So why do you guys think that the author chose Osito as his name? Okay, because he's a little bear. Very good. Uh, how would you say little bear in Spanish? How do you say baby? What does osito mean? It means baby. Does it mean baby bear? Oh, it does? Oh, okay, cool. So it's in Spanish. You're saying baby bear in Spanish. Cool. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's keep going. Why does dad say don't argue with the hungry bear? Think they're angry. They're not angry. They're hangry. 
That means because you're so hungry, you're angry. <laughs> All right, I don't think that's a real word. I was just kidding. All right, anyway, let's keep going. Stubborn Papa Bear didn't listen to Mama Bear's warning. Hi, he growled, jumping out of his chair. These beans are too hot. I told you so, said Mama Bear. Why don't we take a walk into town while they cool? All right, grumbled Papa Bear, whose mouth was still burning. So the bears left their breakfast to cool and went out just then. And another po Sorry. Why do you, why did the bears go out? Oh. Rena? Why? Very good. So the frijoles can cool off. Papa Bear is hungry for breakfast, but Mama makes beans that are too hot, and he burns his mouth. So he says, let's go for a walk until the beans cool. So both Papa and, and Papa, I'm sorry, both Papa Bear and Emilio are waiting for something. Papa Bear is waiting for his breakfast. Emilio, remember Emilio the little boy? Emilio is waiting for his cousins. Both do something else to pass the time. Papa Bear goes for a walk, and Emilio listens to a boy's story. story. Very good. All right, let's keep going. Let's see what happens. Part of the woods, a girl named Transitas set out from her house to visit her friend Osito. She was called Transitas because she had long black braid. So what do you guys think Transitas means in Spanish? What does that mean? Maybe something along the lines of braids, because she has long black braids. All right, let's keep going. It's Abuelo, Emilio called out. The girl in this story is called Goldilocks, and she has blonde hair. Goldilocks? Abuelo shrugged. In my story, it was Trencitas with her long black braids who came to visit. And she was hungry, too. Uh-oh. What do you guys think she's going to do? She's going to eat the frijoles. Let's see. When Trencitas arrived at Osito's house, she noticed that the door was open. So she stepped inside and followed her nose until she came to the three bowls of beans. What does it mean when it says she follows her nose? Does she literally follow her nose? No, her nose is not walking in front of her. She's not following him. It means she follows the good smell. Very good. First, it's called figurative language. Okay, let's keep going. Tess tasted some beans from the great big bowl, but they were too hot. Then she tasted some from the medium-sized bowl, but they were too cold. Finally, she tasted some from the little bowl, and they were just right. So she finished them all up. Now Trencitas decided to sit in the living room and wait for the bears to return. She sat in the great big chair, but it was too hard. She sat in the medium-sized chair, but it was too soft. Then she sat in the little chair, and it was just right, until... Crash! Abuelo, what's Trencitas going to do? asked Emilio. She broke her friend's chair. Don't worry, Abuelo said. She'll come back later with glue and leave it like new. <laughs> Is that different from Goldilocks? Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's see if, if she will. Trencitas was feeling very sleepy. She went upstairs to take a rest. First, she tried the great big bed, but the blanket was scratchy. Then she tried the medium-sized bed, but it was too lumpy. Finally, she tried the little bed. It was too small, but it was so cozy and soft that Trencitas soon fell asleep. So, Trencitas has gone to sleep, so I'm going to pause here and retell what happened to her since she arrived at the bear's house. First, she, she tasted the three bowls of beans. She tasted one big, one medium, and one small. The beans in the little bowl were just right, so she ate them all up. Then she sat in the three different sized chairs and broke the little chair. 
Finally, she tried out the three beds. The little bed was the most comfy, and she fell asleep. Using words like first, then, and finally, it helps me keep track of the correct order of events in this part of the story. I wonder what will happen to Trencitas next. What do you guys think is going to happen? Please. Raise your hand. Jasmine? She's going to get caught, caught, caught. All right, let's see. The three bears came home. Papa Bear headed straight to the kitchen to eat his frijoles. Ay, he growled when he saw his bowl. Somebody's been eating my beans. And somebody's been eating my beans, said Mama Bear. And there's only one bean left in my bowl, said Osito. Then the three bears went into the living room. Ay, said Papa Bear when he saw that his chair had been moved. Somebody's been sitting in my chair. And somebody's been sitting in my chair, said Mama Bear. And my chair is all over the place, said Osito. What do you guys think I means? Oh. Like what? Like, oh no, very good. Oh, oh no. How does the head of the bears know that someone was definitely sitting in their chair? Um, they saw the chair of the Good, they saw Osito's chair is broken and the chairs have been moved out of place. Yeah. All right, let's see. What do you guys think the bears are going to do? Search for, Search for him. Do you think they're going to eat her up? No. no. Okay, let's see. Are they going to call the police? <laughs> let's see. I'm just kidding. All right, let's see. The three bears climbed the stairs to check out the bedrooms. Papa Bear went first. Mama Bear and Osito followed behind him. Ay, said Papa Bear when he looked in the bedroom. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. And somebody's been sleeping in my bed, said Mama Bear. Why do you think Papa Bear goes upstairs? Okay, he, Papa Bear goes upstairs first by himself. I think he goes first because he wants to protect Mama Bear and Osito just in case there's a stranger. Yeah. Right? They do not know who has been eating their beans and sitting in their chairs. Whoever it is, it might be dangerous, right? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Let's, let's keep going. Look who's sleeping in my bed, said Osito. He ran over to Trincitas and woke her up. Then they all had a good laugh. By now, it was getting late. Mama Bear said they'd walk Trincitas home to make sure she got there safely. Papa Bear did not like this idea. Another walk? He growled. What about my frijoles? There'll be beans at my house, offered Trincitas. I'll bet that made Papa Bear happy said Emilio. You're right, said Abuelo. Here's what happened next. Oh, we have a next. So let's recap and see what's happened. First, the bears notice that someone has eaten their beans. Then they see that someone has sat in their chairs and that Osito's chair is broken. Next, they go upstairs to see if someone has been in their bedroom. Finally, they find Trencitos asleep. Were you able to confirm the prediction we made earlier? Yes, the bears found her asleep, and they did they scare her away, though? No. No, did they call the police? No! No, they thought they're going to walk her to her house, and she's going to feed them beans. All right, let's keep going. When they all arrived at Trincitas' house, they sat down at a long table with Trincitas' parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, and lots of cousins. They ate pork and fish and chicken and tortillas and beans and salsa so hot it brought tears to their eyes. And they laughed and shared stories. How is Papa Bear's problem fixed? Oh. Uh, Jasmine? Beans, right? Frijoles. He finally got his frijoles. And Mama and Osito, they walked Trentitas home. And then they ate with the Trentitas family. Is the story over? 
No, not over, because I still don't know what how Emilio's problem is solved. Did Emilio's family come, or is he still hungry and waiting too? Let's see. So you see, Emilio, said Abuelo, Papa Bear had to wait a long time to eat his frijoles. But, in the end, he had a wonderful meal and lots of fun, just as you will when your cousins arrive. Why do you guys think Abuelo told this story to Emilio? What does he want Emilio to understand? Yes, very good. That It takes patience. It's important to be patient. Even though waiting for someone can be hard, it often leads to a lot of fun. You should be patient. All right, let's keep going. Is that the end of the story? Emilio asked. Yes, answered Abuelo. And it's the end of your waiting, too. Why is it the end of his waiting? Glossary. Abuelo. Good, because his cousins came. Uh, and where do you guys think, uh, raise your hand please, where do you guys think Emilio and his grandfather are sitting in the house? What part of the house are they sitting on looking at the picture? Raise your hand, what did I just say? Bernaya? No, they're right here. Where do you think they are, Leia? Very good, they're outside on the front porch. Very good. Um, so what happens in, what important events happen in the middle? That's the big part of the story where Abuelo does what? Okay, but what does Abuelo do during that part, middle part? He's telling the story, isn't he? Yes! All right, very good. And at the end, he finishes the story and Emilio's cousins arrive. And now they can finally eat together. You see this part where it says glossary? This is where it tells you what each word means. What does abuelo mean, everyone? Yeah. Osito. Little bear. Frijoles. Frijoles. Sí. Buenos dias. Good morning. I. O. Trencitas. Little bear. Tortillas. Little bear. Little bear. Salsa. Little bear. Little bear. Very good. Let's go to the questions at the end. Let's tell the story and the events in order that it happened. We're going to use the words first, next, then, and last to help us. First, what happens? Raise your hand. Dominic. What? Okay, first, Emilio's grandfather says he's going to tell uh, him a story. And the story is about three bears. Their breakfast is too hot. They go for a walk. Trencitas comes. She eats the beans. She sits in the chair. She takes a nap. After that, the bears come home and find Trencitas asleep. They all go to her house for dinner. At the end, Emilio and his family will have dinner too. Boom. That's the whole story. Whoa. Who's telling the story? Oh, oh, oh. Dustin? His grandfather. His grandfather. Very good. How would the story be different if one of the three bears were telling it? That'd be... Would he hear that as well? He would be explaining what happened instead of telling what happened, wouldn't he? Yeah. How is the story like... No. Explaining a story is saying, okay, so then I was here and then this happened, and so you're seeing it from his point of view rather than what actually happened. It's a different perspective. All right, number three, uh, how is the story like the other story we know? It's, how is it like Goldilocks? Mm -hmm. have three, bears. three bears, they live in the forest, and the bears act like and the humans, and there's a girl that comes in their house. Very good. How is it different? How does the how does Goldilocks and the three bears end? How does that end? What do they do to Goldilocks? Marina? No. No. They went to the bears' house Okay, but no, in the Goldilocks and the three bears and Mariah, how does it end? They all become friends. That's one version. Another version is Goldilocks runs away and says she'll never do it again. And another way is she apologizes and starts crying and they forgive her and they become friends. But how did this story end? Abuelo and the three bears. Very good. They took her to her house and they all had dinner together. 
All right, so now is the last part. You're going to go ahead and take out your reading graphic organizer. It looks like this. No, not that. It looks like this. It says retell. You're going to tell me what happened to the beginning, middle, and end. Don't just tell me what happened to the beginning of Abuelo and the three, like, um, grandfather story. Tell me what happened to the beginning of this story. So everyone's is going to start off saying first... Emilio's grandfather says he wants to tell him a story. Then you're going to start telling me the story on what happened in the middle and then end. Okay? It's pretty easy. It's not hard. But you are going to say it in your own words, please. And that's all you're doing today for HMH. If you have any questions, let me know. I will see you later. Bye.